Hey CW Apes, this is Mr. Kennedy again. Um, today's video is all about helping you figure out how to do the Find the Epicenter Lab uh, at home. So on our class webpage, you should go to the link that says AP Environmental Science, and there under Earth Systems, you should look for the Find the Epicenter of an Earthquake Lab. Um, once you get there, you click on that link and you will see this in PDF form. You have a couple of different options in terms of PDF editors for this class that you've already been introduced to. So you can use a PDF editor to literally write on this document, or if you want, you can print it out um, right on paper and then upload that into your digital notebook. Whatever suits you is fine with me, either one. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. Okay, very, very important for those of you that don't like reading instructions, um, you need to read the instructions, okay? So it starts off with some background information so that you'll get the difference between epicenter and focus of an earthquake again, just like I gave you in your lecture notes, and the difference between the different kinds of waves that we see in an earthquake. Now, what do I do with this stuff? Well, let's turn some pages here, okay? Um, with regard to the experiment, all of your procedures are laid out for you right here. Now, sometimes kids get a little confused, so I'm going to give you the kind of abridged version. But if what I'm telling you still doesn't make sense, right here, that's where you go. You got to go step by step, one piece at a time. Follow those instructions. So the first thing it says is it says using the data um, from the Find the Epicenter worksheet, calculate the difference in time. TSP, right, between the arrival of a P wave and the S wave for each city and record that time delay in seconds on your data table. Wow, that's a mouthful. So where do I look for all that? Well, if you turn a couple of pages, right, you will eventually see a find the epicenter worksheet, right? So here you've been given some cities, New York, Louisville, my personal favorite, greatest city on the planet, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Pueblo, Colorado, and Phoenix, Arizona. And next to that are some time intervals for P and S waves. So just like the handout said, you're going to make some calculations, right, right here for the time delay, okay? Once you have those time delays done, let's go on to the next step. Then it says obtain a card with the time delay scale and carefully fold that card back on the dotted line and crease the fold. So I sent you or I have uploaded a picture of a little doohickey that looks like this. Okay. Now, if you're going to print something out for this activity, this is probably the one thing that you're going to want to print out. Okay. Um, and it goes and is supposed to be used with a graph that goes with this activity. So what it basically is telling you to do is you're supposed to take this little ruler and you're supposed to fold it over so that you have something that looks like that. Notice how I folded it over? Okay, so there you go. You're going to take this and you're going to mark the time in seconds that you have calculated for each of your cities on this little ruler here. Okay, that comes right off your data table. It tells you about this in the steps. Now, once you've got those marks done, you're going to then go to this graph, okay? Looks pretty crazy and complicated, but it's real simple. What you're going to do is you're going to say, all right, if I've got a time delay for, and I'm making this up, this is not the right spot, Green Bay, Wisconsin, right here, okay? You're going to set the zero on your ruler at the zero mark on your graph for the P wave, and that zero needs to stay on that line. You're going to move that zero along the line until your time mark hits the S wave. Okay? Now, once that happens, you're going to go from that mark over to your Y axis right here, and it's going to tell you, okay, your travel time in seconds is going to tell you how far, using the y-axis and the x-axis here, how far you were away from the epicenter of the earthquake, okay? So you use these two marks, right? This is the important one that goes on your data table, your distance in kilometers, okay? So you can see 
right? Here's a, a spot on my data table for distance in kilometers. That's where you fill that in. All right. Last thing that you got to do is you got to convert this distance in kilometers to a map distance in centimeters and plot all of that on a map of the United States. Okay. How do I make that conversion? It sounds scary, um, but again, it's no big deal. I've also given you a copy of a map of the United States. And at the bottom, you're going to notice down here it says one centimeter is equal to 200 kilometers. So if I was 200 kilometers away from the epicenter standing in Phoenix based on the data in my data table, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here from this dot and I'm going to measure with just a ruler. The experiment says you're supposed to use a compass, but how many of us have those at home? So you just take a ruler and you're going to make some marks around Phoenix, Arizona that are about one centimeter out like so. And then you connect the dots so that you get a circle. You're going to repeat that for each of the cities on the map and then look for where your circles touch each other. You need at least three of them to touch. That's called triangulation. And wherever three of them overlap, that's where your earthquake epicenter actually was okay so once you've done all that you're going to need to finish your lab report and submit in your notebook this data table the answers to your questions right post lab questions that you see here and your map okay good luck cw apes if you have any questions you know where to find me all of this again is available from our class webpage. I'll see you next time.